Hello guys, welcome to Top Anime Sensei. This video is the continuation video after Invade the Empire. So if you have not watched it, then please watch it. The link is in the description. So without any further delay let's start. But before we start, please like, subscribe and press the bell icon for more updates. Thus, another question arose, ignoring Farminas. Could they use a different approach by invading northern Ingratia? The conclusion was that it would also be challenging. Ingratia's northern border was the playground of demons. Guy didn't seem too keen on keeping his subordinates in check. And Testeros's men were now in charge of its defense. It was a constant battleground for belligerents. And if the Empire were to invade, then they could expect to become a target of opportunity. Therefore, an attack via the sea was unfeasible. Next, you had to consider a land invasion. They needed to take a route through the Dwarven Kingdom or cross the Dragon Roost in the Cannot Mountains. The latter possessed too great a risk, so it'd be discarded as an option. After all, marching at an altitude higher than Mount Everest would be suicidal. Regardless of how well prepared you were, it would be impractical for them to train ordinary soldiers into mountain climbing experts. And even if they did, a group of dragons, who were A, ranked monsters, would be waiting for them. Common sense dictated that no one would be stupid enough to choose this route. Then, what about going through the Dwarven Kingdom? When this possibility was pointed out by Wisdom King Raphael San, Hinata investigated it in my stead, and she confirmed that it was theoretically possible for a large army to pass through. However, Gazel wasn't someone who would ever permit this, and if the Empire forced their way through, then they would need to battle the Dwarven Kingdom before they could face the Western nations. The invasion of the Dwarven Kingdom was as reckless as it sounded. The armed nation of Dwargan, who declared neutrality, had a highly trained standing army to guarantee their security. Their armaments, which made full use of their technological prowess, were simply exceptional, and it was said that the dwarves had no weak soldiers among them. To begin with, based on its topography, the Dwarven Kingdom was built like a fortress. If they just protected their entrances, they could stave off any attack, even one by an enormous army. Eastern, Western, and Central among these three entrances, if the Empire were to invade, they would choose either Eastern or Central. Western was connected to the Kingdom of Farminas, so they wouldn't have to worry about that. Eastern was the most dangerous and at risk, since it shared a border with the Empire. But as expected, Gazel was nothing but prepared. He'd been concentrating the bulk of his forces in this area in order to keep an eye on the Empire's movements. If something were to happen, I planned on quickly responding to their call for aid and the Dwarven Kingdom was also safe in Gazel's hands. This was the current situation surrounding our country. In the end, I felt that the Empire's only option was to go through the Great Jira Forest. Before my meeting with Benimaru, which had become a daily routine, I went through these same plans once more. In case they chose the Great Jira Forest route, which we defended, it was obvious that the greatest obstacle, from the Empire's perspective was Veldora's existence. They wouldn't attempt a frontal assault, so they'd probably try to trick Veldora by preparing a decoy unit. With that in mind, I had to consider our country's defensive setup. There were three possible routes for initiating military operations within the Great Jira Forest. However, one of them was adjacent to Dwargan's territory. If the Empire ignored our warning and came to invade, the Dwarven Kingdom and our army could catch them in a pincer attack. The Empire would definitely be aware of how dangerous this option was, so I think it's fine to set a lower alert level. It was more likely that the Empire would strike by using one of the two remaining routes. But is it really that straightforward? It was a bad idea to split your forces when facing a large enemy, so we could deploy Veldora on one side and our full army on the other. If we employed this tactic, then we should be able to handle the Empire, even if they prepared a diversionary force. Even I, who was by no means an expert in military affairs, could formulate something like this. Thus, I had my doubts that professional soldiers would set out to war with such a simple strategy. There was also the possibility that the Empire was looking down on us, thinking that with an overwhelmingly massive army, they could trample over us, regardless of Veldora or our monster army. On the other hand, perhaps they would utilize an underhanded strategy instead of facing us head on. For instance, they could use the regular army as bait and initiate guerrilla warfare with elite troops and small groups. What if they split into platoon-sized units in order to infiltrate the forest and then regroup somewhere else? In these cases, 
it'd be impossible to monitor all of the minor trails throughout the woods. If we carelessly deployed a reconnaissance force, depending on the scale of the enemy, it might come back to haunt us. Just like what Hinata had done before, if a platoon of Holy Knight level troops were dispatched. If we took that prospect into account, there wouldn't be enough troops to cover all possible incursions. It was risky if we moved to intercept the Empire after determining their objective. So I wanted to avoid that as much as possible. And if we lost the initiative, there was the chance that we'd fall into an unrecoverable position. Although we were trying to be vigilant for that exact reason, the crux of the matter was that we couldn't read the Empire's movements. In war, the more unpredictable you were, the bigger the advantage you held over your opponent. Oftentimes, making an unexpected move would be enough to clinch a victory. As a result, we had to consider every single possible scenario. It's no use, my mind's going in circles. I became irritated when those thoughts bubbled up. Wouldn't it really be better for me to attack first? Or rather, wouldn't attempting a blitzkrieg, the moment the Empire declared war, be the correct answer? Since we couldn't guarantee that the Empire would move according to our predictions, it was pointless to dwell further on this subject. No matter how many times I thought it over, I felt that launching a preemptive strike was the rational thing to do, rather than waiting for an opponent to make their move. We wouldn't be overwhelmed with worries and could seize the initiative. Well, I won't do it. No matter how long I mulled it over, the perfect answer wouldn't drop from the sky. It was smart to be flexible about these things. In other words, playing it by ear. Somehow, it sounded cool and gave the impression of a capable man. Right, let's do that. Having reached my usual conclusion, I grabbed the cream puffs that Shuna had prepared. All this hard thinking gave me a craving for sweets. Although, some claim you would get sick of having too much of the same thing. That it never happened to me. Well, if that ever did happen to me, I might reconsider. Hey, eating them alone is so unfair. While I was in the middle of enjoying my cream puffs with Xion's black tea, Benimaru finally arrived. We were in my office. He was a little late to our meeting, which somehow had become a routine. He must have been extremely busy, given that he was in charge of war preparations against the Empire. Complaining about tardiness would have been quite petty of me. What? Help him. I have no idea what you're saying. If you aren't an expert, you're better off leaving it alone, I know. Awfully convenient of me to say. Xion. Pour Benimaru some black tea too. Understood. Benimaru seemed to have been traumatized by Xion's cooking. And as a result, always wore a wary expression. It was okay if it was just black tea. But still, his cautious attitude never faded, very typical of him. Thank you, nothing like a couple sweets to get you going again. Well, good thing we've got sugar to spare. It'd be nice if this peace continues. Right, I guess if a decisive battle were to come, we could just beat them and call it a day. Benimaru's confidence was as strong as ever. Although reliable, I hope he didn't forget to make an effort to avoid war as the first option. Enjoy. Xion placed the cup of black tea in front of Benimaru. She poured some more for me too. It had a wonderfully relaxing scent. What about Diablo? Binimaru asked. Ah, uh, he has another day of arbitration. Again. Yeah, again. Yep. Diablo was out mediating. Ultima and Kara got into a spat every single day. It wasn't that they didn't get along, but rather they tried to compete with each other in any way, shape, or form. Yesterday, it was about the extradition of criminals, and before that was the treatment of suspects in custody. Sometimes they'd fight over the food menu. And other times, they'd argue about who should buy the latest fashion clothes first. Everything would be fine if it were just a verbal debate. But when those two fought, their ferocity could surprise even the Yakuza. Only Diablo could stop those ruthless perpetrators. Venom, who was Diablo's subordinate, was already a victim, having been abused both verbally and physically by Ultima and Kara. No damage had thankfully been inflicted upon the town's residents. And in fact, it had actually become famous enough to lead people to make bets. But it was still a problem that we couldn't turn a blind eye to. That was the reason why I had Diablo sort things out. But it might be time to think of a permanent solution. Otherwise, the situation might change for the worst. I could already feel that Diablo was going to snap sooner or later. Speaking of which, Diablo took Ultima and Kara to the labyrinth a few days ago. He was brimming with enthusiasm, not because of something fun and sweet such as a date, but about the thought that he was going to give them a thorough scolding. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. 
And if you guys have not watched my other videos then please watch them. The links are in the description. And don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss the updates.